Whether you're cooking this inside or cooking it outside, folks, we're talking about that classic dish, pot roast. It is gonna grace your table and everybody around it is gonna want second and thirds. graced our table so many Sundays, it did. And people would come over and they'd think, my mother makes the bot the best pot roast ever. Really, when you get to thinking about it, the price of beef, this four and a half pound chuck roast cost me $24, all right? So you figure that in with the carrots, the potatoes, and the onions, and the beef broth, and we're gonna serve six to seven people. We're looking at maybe $4 a plate. That's pretty cheap eating, especially when you can gather the family around there and bless it and have a good time. Now, I'm going to show you how to cook this in a Dutch oven because I've had a lot of people been asking me, hey, can you do a chuck roast or a pot roast in the oven? We're going to walk you through the method to show you how really simple it is. It's a low and slow cook and we're going to figure that out for you. But for you folks that want to cook it in the house, hey, I'm going to have it broke down to where you can cook it in a crock pot or you can cook it in the oven. The star of the show. That chuck roast has got that good marbling in there, but it's got enough fat content to it too that it's going to be oh so tender and juicy. Like I say, this one's weighing about 4.7 pounds. And you can tell by the thickness of this, this is a pretty good size roast. That's why I'm thinking, folks, we're going to get six to eight servings time we mix all them veggies in there with it. So I like to just bring it out about maybe 20, 30 minutes ahead of time. But 45 minutes before that, guess what? If you're cooking this in a crock pot, go ahead and get that thing out, turn it on high, put in two and a half cups of beef broth and just let it go to warming. But like I told you, we didn't always have chuck roast. We had an arm roast, which is up here. We had a sirloin roast, which is back here. But we also, they used to make what was called a rolled roast. It was cut off that neck and pulled down and then they would lay it out there and roll it up and tie it. Now my mother would get them things, unroll it, go ahead and season it all really good on the inside, roll it back up, tie it with that butcher's twine, you could stick that thing in the oven, whew, it was good eating. Now for you elk hunters and you deer hunters out there, I do like to make me a good elk roast or a deer roast out of that neck meat, cause you can just peel it off first, season it like that, tie it up, Ooh, it is oh so good. Remember this chuck roast is coming off the front half of there. Not too far back is that chuck eye steak and all that stuff. So this is a good tender piece of meat to start out with. So if I was going to say I want to buy the best roast, if you can't buy that rib roast, that prime rib, you know what I'm talking about? Buy chuck roast. Hey, it is Sunday dinner all together. Now for a big roast like that, we're going to add pretty close to a third of a cup of our original seasoning. And to that, we're going to put in a tablespoon of smoked paprika, but also minced dried garlic. And I want you to season it well. Don't think, well, I'm just going to put a little on there. Folks, it's a big honking piece of roast meat right here it is. I mean, this thing needs to have some seasoning on it. Go ahead and let's turn it over and look what come with it. A little cushion so it could take a nap. Get this other side seasoned. And be sure that you go ahead and get all this that you got laying everywhere so we don't waste nothing. I like to turn him back over here, give him a sprinkling down this side. And I think we have company coming. He's over on a tractor. That young fella is hauling round bales of hay, getting ready for winter. And folks, this old country is so dry. If it don't rain or snow this winter, they're going to feed a lot of hay. They are. So you see... What we got left here, don't think that we're not going to use that. When we get all this stuff in there, we're just going to go ahead and sprinkle all that around there too. Now, remember, I told you if y'all was doing it in a crock pot, what to do. But let's talk about the vessel we're going to use, okay? Now, when I told you I was going to cook it in a Dutch oven, and remember, there's so many kinds of Dutch ovens from 8s, 10s, 12s, 14s. And if you're lucky, you might even still have a 16. But there's a shallow 14 and a deep 14. This is a deep. In a deep 12, it's going to be a pretty tight fit everywhere. You could probably do it if the roast was a little smaller. If you've got a 12 inch deep, just get them to cut you a little smaller roast and I think you'll be all right. You got to have you some coals already going. Okay, don't be thinking you're going to start all this and you ain't even got the fire built. Get you some hardwood lump, 
which is charcoal, or get you some wood and burn it down to where you got enough coals to cook this thing because we're going to need them. But I like to start out with, and I'm going to go ahead and tell you folks, if you want to really see this, how I used to cook it on ranches so many times, check out our turkey video to where we cooked a turkey breast in the ground. About the same cook time, but you're going to realize that, hey, we need something for that to rest on. And what is it called? Onion bumpers. Uh-huh. They make them all around the world, they do. So get you two onion and just cut them up to where they're pretty even in size. The reason them are in there, folks, is to keep that roast from sitting right there on that bottom of that Dutch oven because if we have to really put some heat directly under to get this thing just like we want it, I don't want that roast to burn because I want to cook it slow. So we're going to have some beef broth. We are, and I like to use about, oh, I'd say two and a half cups. Here comes the next thing. This beautiful piece of beef is going to lay right in here. And you can see, look how them onions have, give it buoyancy, Shan. That is a big word for the cowboy. Onion life jackets, that's what we're talking about. You be wondering to yourself, ain't we gonna have no veggies in there? So we're talking about adding carrots and potatoes to this, but they ain't near as big as this roast. If we put it all in there at the same time, them things is gonna disintegrate and fall apart. We have the W sauce. I ain't even gonna try to pronounce it, I'm not but I like to give it a generous shaking all the way across here. And then they go ahead and feel generous and put a little more in there too. You can buy a dried bay leaf, you can. But folks, to me, because my mother always told me, you put a bay leaf in something, be sure you remember how many you put in there because you got to take them out. Have you ever eat a bay leaf, Shan? You know, I haven't. I haven't either, so I really don't know what the problem everybody's is. Like, I know, everybody's stressed about eating them. So maybe we'll learn in the comments from this video about why you don't eat a bay leaf. I think it's just because they're like kind of... Um, Bitter? Well, usually you're using them, they're dried, and they're just real uh, brittle. brittle. Yeah. yeah. These are fresh, so I'm going to put about four in there if they're the big size. So I love me some time. Let's take time to figure it out. You want to, Shin? So... I like to put some around the outside edges, and you'll see me here in a minute. We'll go ahead and put some directly on top of that roast too. And folks, there is a secret ingredient that has to go in here because you just gotta have it. What is that? A whole stick of butter. I'll meet y'all over at the coals because we are fixing to fire this rascal up, let it cook an hour, and then add us some veggies. Y'all have seen me cook a lot of things in the Dutch oven the last 10 or 11 years that y'all been watching YouTube. But folks, this is a little different method here. This is what I call the low and slow, we gonna build a moat and a bumper method. Now you've seen me where all them old coals were because this old ground is so hard it is. And I use them coals sort of as a buffer to where I'm not gonna start any fire in some of this grass cause it's pretty dry underneath. So I pull them way back out of the way and I try to dig me a ledge in there about that deep all the way around. That way I can load more coals up in there. And you can see we're probably six to eight inches away from the sides everywhere around that Dutch oven. Now go ahead and fill that moat plumb up because we're gonna have to add some coals to it as we go along. But go ahead and cover that top up good and heavy because we can check it, we can see it. If it begins to brown too quick, we can take some of that off. Now, you could sure do this in the ground and it really a foolproof method. You know, dig your hole so deep, watch that turkey video and you pile them coals in there about that thick and then you go ahead and put that many more on top, cover it back up with dirt, let it cook three hours. You're not gonna burn nothing in there because you've shut all the oxygen off of it. But when I do it this way, I'd be on a ranch and if I was doing it like this, I might start it at 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning. That way I was gonna let it cook probably about three, four hours if I had to, to get that thing good and tender to where it fell apart. I've cooked brisket in a Dutch oven the same way as this. You just gotta be sure that you watch your coals, make sure you have plenty of them because you're gonna need them in the low and slow method. Now, this is something too that you're gonna have to have plenty of hot coals for. When you get them first ones out, sure, you'll have time to burn some little stuff down or start some hardwood lump over. It's probably gonna take, I would say, close to a normal sack, three fourths of a sack. Now, if you're using them big ones like that Fogo that we got there, it'll probably take pretty close to a half. But I couldn't tell you how much exactly wood it's gonna take this much around there, but go ahead and have plenty because you can use it, and if you ain't got it, you gotta wait to make it. We're gonna go one hour, and then we're gonna add the veggie. Mm. 
we've been on about 25 30 minutes and about every 20 30 minutes i need you to do a heat check go ahead and look at the knob and see what temperature it says okay folks really there ain't no knob people I, i've been telling people for years there's never been a knob on the dutch oven it's all by really a hand link here away from there put your hand on it can you leave it for more than five seconds it's not hot enough we want to make sure that we check all the way around every side and if it's not the even heat go ahead get you some more coals pile them up that's why we put this moat in there remember it's where we could hold more heat And on one hour exactly we have. Remember, I told you we was gonna add the veggies. Guess, guess what? I, I got a secret for y'all. Them red potatoes is back down there at the house. It take me about 20 minutes to go ahead and get them. So I'm gonna put these carrots in there. I'll hurry and go get them taters. Meet y'all back in here. I'll throw them in there and we'll see what happens. But see that trivet laying there on the ground? Always have you two when you're cooking, all right? Because when we take this off there, I don't want you to set it on the ground okay it's keeping ash keeping dirt keeping cow manure everything in the world out of it to where when we put the lid back on it it falls in there so i have me exactly one pound of them organic baby carrots and if you had them potatoes on hand right now and i would use six eight of them medium-sized red potatoes and quarter them and i would put them around the outside edge too or dump them up there on top and remember that leftover seasoning just go ahead and let's give her a good sprinkling right there one more handful and then we'll put the lid on it and folks i'm gonna hurry and go get some taters probably i'm thinking we're looking at three and a half to four and a half hours depending on how the wood goes what's going on in there because i wrote that roast fork tender to where it falls plumb apart now to start you know we put them coals out there i figure maybe with good hardwood lump or good hard wood that you're probably going to have to do maybe three more additions to it to get this thing done because leave yourself plenty of time get up eight o'clock you're going to have it you know for two o'clock meal stuff like that but give yourself plenty of time and make sure you don't run out of heat Thank you, Mama, for all them times you put it on our table. Lord, how I miss you, I do. You were a great teacher. Oh, how I loved you. About 30 minutes before that got done, that brown, that top had browned just right. So I went ahead and got rid of them coals. Now remember when you're doing this, check that heat every about 20, 25 minutes because you're going to have to add some more to it. As my daddy used to say, the sun, it is a set. So it's time we be sitting down too at the table and get some of this on. Now, I don't know where the rest of the help is today. I ain't got a clue. But the little mage, the little mage is here. And the little mage has got, come here. The little mage got his winter haircut on. Yes. Go ahead on, mage. And a boy, he said, boy, dad, I do like it. And I do love a red skin potato. Sorry I had to go get them at town, but it was a quick trip. It was. Let me have a bite of them. Mmm. And now, the piece de la resistance, chuck roast. Mm, mm, mm. Wow, wow. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Woo. Well, you heard me say that graced our table many a sunday noon meal after church but mostly a sunday night meal uh, grandma and grandpa come over sometimes the aunt and uncles would all gather around the table and everybody would join hands and folks that what that's what i'm reaching out to y'all for is to join hands with you because we're going to bless y'all too because y'all are such a blessing to me and shannon uh, because y'all watch our channel. Y'all are good, honest, caring, kind Americans and people all over the world. And we just love you so much and thank you. So if you don't mind, I think we'll just go ahead and bless it for Mama and all of y'all too. 
Our most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come before you very humbly, thanking you for the many, many blessings, Lord, that we have. Oftentimes, Lord, we overlook them and we take them for granted. The sunrise, the sunset, the people around us at a table, Lord. I just ask you to make us ever mindful of them folks that are sitting next to us, Lord, that we just squeeze that hand a little harder. Make sure we give them a hug before they go to bed. Make sure we tell them we love them. Make sure we care for them. In Jesus' name, I ask these things. Amen. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed this pot roast in a Dutch oven. Mm, don't get no better than that. It was a one pot meal. It was. And as always, I tip my hat to all our service men and women and all the veterans that have kept that old flag of flying over camp. We just appreciate you one and all. Please be safe and we'll keep all of y'all in our prayers as well. Rest of you, come on in here. It's family hug time. I'm not going to squeeze you tight because somebody said I broke the ribs last week. So I'm just going to give you a little old bitty one. There you go. God bless you each and every one, and I'll see you down a classic comfort meal pot roast in a Dutch oven trail. You see me right there about all oh, 30 minutes before it was done, and the reason I was looking off is because when you go to mention in food, the crew come back. Come on. Come on. I don't want y'all to get left out. Come on. Let's have a bite. Let's have a bite. Mage says, does that mean I get two bites? Beak says, I am ready. Good job, Beak. Duker, say. Come on. Oh, Mage, you bit my finger. Wait, Beak. Wait, because you know you got manners. Show the people. No, you wait. You wait. Okay, good boy. You just keep waiting. Thank you so much.